168. That was my score on the GRE quantitative section. And trust me, getting to that score not only required extensive preparation, but also quite a lot of tips, strategies, tricks, which I'm going to be giving you in this video. And by the way, if you're going for a program related to science, technology, engineering, or math, trust me, my friend, you need to show a score of 160 plus under any circumstances. So let me make sure that you are able to do just that. The first thing that we're going to begin with is building a plan. The worst thing you can do right here is to go forward and start doing the questions without actually knowing what you are studying for and how many days you're going to finish it in. So your plan should take into account the deadline. That is when you have to take the test it should also take into account how many hours per day you can study because that differs for everyone it should also take into account your target score and it should take into account your current level of preparation. Once you have all of these down, you can then understand what kind of plan suits you best. Now I understand for some of you doing this for the first time, it would be difficult to create such a plan. And that's why I've created two such plans for you. Here's the plans for one and two months for the GRE. These are general plans, but you can take a look at them. They're available on my channel and you can very easily go ahead and follow these plans as a general rule. The second most important tip I have for you is to focus on concept building first. A lot of people go ahead, start working with the timer and start solving questions just because they may be, and trust me, I was one of them <laughs> because we are overconfident. We think that we already know. We studied science and maths in our class 12. Maybe we, you know, maybe we went to an engineering college and we should already know these concepts, right? The answer should be yes, ideally, but trust me, people forget. I forgot and I wouldn't blame you if you forgot one or two formulas while you actually finished your bachelor's for the last three, four years, right? So my advice is study the chapter once. If you don't want to study it, call it revision, but revise it. My recommendation personally is to follow the Magush videos. They do it beautifully. It's a one-time thing. You watch the videos for each and every chapter and you know, you just create the notes for the parts that you find that, all right, I forgot that formula. All right, this, this thing I forgot, you know, this rule I forgot. Let me just write it down. Create your own notes because everyone is different, right? but that should be the entirety of preparation you need to get started. That's it. It's not going to take very long. Now remember, don't worry about the study material. A lot of the study material is available on our website and I'll tell you how you can get access to it as well. Point number three is to solve without the timer first. Why do I say that? The reason is the accuracy level. First, I want you to study without the timer so you can focus on the concepts. Once you focus on the concepts, you know the approaches to solve a question, you are able to get a good accuracy, let's say 80, 85% of your questions are correct. Then you move on to the timer and then you can beat the timer as well. But if you're just going to the timer directly and you don't really know the questions, what's going on over here and you're doing it for the first time, it's a real easy way of getting demotivated. Point number four, there are faster ways of solving question. There are slower ways of doing that. Both these ways exist. The GRE needs you to be two things. Number one is correct, of course, but also number two, fast. You cannot just be correct and slow because at the end of the day, if you're slow, you're going to miss out on a lot of the questions and hence your score is going to go down. So my advice is whenever you solve a question and you feel like it's taking a little too much time, take a look at the back of the book for the answer that the book has. Post that question somewhere online. Find out what other people are doing to solve that question because trust me, there may be faster approaches that might exist to solving that question. That brings me to my point number five. If you're unable to solve a question or you don't really understand what's going on with the answer on the back of the book or whatever you're studying from, right? There's a way to actually get through that as well. Use the right community. My advice is go ahead to ymrad.com on the discussions page. You post your GRE question right over there and you will see within a couple of hours, someone will come and answer your question for you. And you might actually find a study partner while you're at it. The sixth point. In this one, I'm going to be telling you that you must use the right resources. See what happens is you go ahead and you pick the wrong books, the wrong study material. Turns out your score may be low just because you're following the wrong kind of study material. Follow trusted study material, which myself, I and hundreds of people that I've worked with have followed. Now the right ones over here would be to basically start with the Magoosh package. They have questions and videos both. Like I said, you'll need the videos for revision and you know, if you don't really have them or you don't want to invest in that, you have free materials such as the five pound book, the Manhattan five pound book. You can go to that. 
You can even go for the 1014 questions from Princeton for the GRE. That's also an amazing book. And if you need many of these books for free, you can actually very easily get them by signing up on viamgrad.com. We have an offer of the year that you can utilize right now where you'll get a massive amount of free material, SOPs, LORs, and a lot more stuff. So go for that. Point number seven is to practice a lot. Why do I say practice a lot? Essentially because practice is needed to boost your score first off. And secondly, because I want you to get used to the timer later on. Because when you get used to the timer, you will be able to finish off the questions a little bit earlier. And that's what I want from you. I want you to finish a little bit earlier, even though the GRE is shorter, I want you to have at least two minutes at the end so you can focus on questions that you wanna review. Maybe some questions that you were unsure about, you can go back to them. All the questions that you couldn't solve, maybe you would have flagged them previously, you go to them and you solve them. That's a very important part of the GRE. And that actually brings me to my eighth point. What's that? That is that there's no negative marking. Now you may already know this and you might say, yes, that's not exactly a tip, right? That is a tip. Let me tell you why. So if you're getting stuck on any question, what I want you to do is you guess, you flag it, that means you mark it and then you move on. The reason is that you can always come back to this question, but because of this question, I don't want you to waste your valuable time, which brings me to actually point number nine, that all of these questions are marked exactly the same. So no question is more important than the other. Every question has the same weightage. That means you should be doing the easier ones first and not last. So if you get stuck, that's why you need to move on because there are easier questions probably later on that you might miss out on. And finally, point number 10 is to please, please, please avoid offline coachings. The reason for that is that usually most of these coachings are not worth the price you're paying. And besides, everything you need is already available online. The material, the study material from some of the best creators, which you will not find in offline coachings, is already available to you. So all you need is go ahead, start working from the packages and the books that I've mentioned and you should be good. You can watch online videos, those are okay, and that's one form of coaching, but that will come at a fraction of price. And if you need any help, you'll always have discussions on why I'm grad. Remember, regimen is not the problem. So if you say that if, if I go to an offline coaching, I will have a regular you know, st study pace and everything, trust me, if you don't have a regular study pace or you don't really have a regular schedule of studying, that means you're not taking it seriously enough. I'm sorry to say that, but that's just it. So make sure you build a schedule and you should not have any problems with that, stick to it. And if you still face any issues whatsoever, my WhatsApp number is in the description. Reach out to me, follow me on Instagram where I have a lot more content just like this and you can reach out to me personally, we can connect. And of course, subscribe on YouTube for more such content. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye and take care until next time.